The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt becomes insipid, with what will you restore its flavor? Keep salt in yourselves, and you will have peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Is that is such a very um, interesting passage to do, uh, to do a kind of little bit of biblical studies with, like how do we, how do we read the scriptures, right? And we, we reject a, a literalistic view of the scriptures, which is a good thing, uh, at least as it relates to this passage, because uh, if we were to take it literalistically, uh, we'd have a lot of people walking around without feet and hands and, <laughs> and whatever you have. So um, someone's alarm, someone's car, car alarm is going off. I'm just saying, okay, whatever. I, I mean, you know, you want it to go all, you want it to go all day, that's fine. Um, lose your battery, you won't be able to drive home, but that's your, you know, that's your choice. Okay, so, yeah, we, it's, um, it, and I don't know, there's, uh, the, what does it mean to be salted with fire? What does it mean to keep salt in you? Well, of course, Jesus has already laid out his, um, his kingdom of God agenda. He's already laid out his transforming the world agenda, and he's, he's called his own followers to be salt and light. And so, the, and our saltiness, right, is is our ability to um, preserve and maintain, and maybe even to to give flavor to the world. And this is this is a big part of of our call. How are we to do this except by following Jesus? How are how are we to um, re- retain our the the saltiness of our of our character if not for our trusting and following Jesus? And this is what this is what the passage really is all about, because we've, we've seen um, just before this, the disciples on the way arguing, uh, about, uh, arguing among themselves about who is the greatest, and then uh, Jesus comes back um, and, and reproves them on, on the point, and then he pushes into this, where we see again the, the urgency of the movement and what is most significant as it relates to the Jesus movement. He said, anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to the Christ, be, because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. This is like, you know, we're doing the us versus them stuff yesterday where, you know, this guy is doing mighty, performing mighty deeds in the name of Jesus and the disciples stop him because he's not one of them. Jesus is, re, he's redrawing the lines of, say, Israel and the nations around himself. What do I mean by that? Uh, we see that Israel always had this understanding that it was them and the nations, right? And that was the us versus them. It was us, loyal, faithful Jews, and them, the the pagan nations, uh, the pagan peoples, whatever. Jesus is redrawing this, oh, I should say, and the idea was that the people, the nations, the non-Jewish peoples, would be judged by the way that they um, interacted with Israel, so God would bring judgment to bear in, in and among the nations by how they um, lived with respect to or in relation to uh, Israel. Jesus is redrawing these lines around himself. And this is, I don't know, we, it's quite subtle here. It's not so subtle in uh, the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel. Uh, but here we see Jesus, is, he is doing that if this person gives you water to drink because you are mine, 
then they are judged in the right or judged to be good or judged to be whatever, right? The opposite then, it's not exactly the opposite, but we have to look at the other, other side of it where um, you have to be very intent on this new Israel movement so that within we have to be very careful with the people that have been called into this movement. So in this sense, he's doing, okay, you want to do us versus them? There are, of course, two parts to that. There is the them part, and they will be judged on the way they treat you. Okay, fine. But this guy performing mighty deeds in my name, his judgment is he's, he's going to be judged in the right. If, if he were simply just giving a cup of water to you because you're in my movement, he'd be judged in the right. He's doing something more than that. Okay, so the, now that's the them part. And we don't have to worry about that, by the way. We should hear, okay, we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to do my Jesus thing, and however someone treats me because I'm doing my Jesus thing, that's going to be the determination of, of their judgment. I have nothing to do with that except that I have to do the Jesus thing. If I, now, here we go to the us part. If I don't do the Jesus thing, then I'm the one who's condemned. So if I, in, even, even if I allow someone to change me by their interaction with me because I'm doing the Jesus thing, now I'm liable to judgment because I'm not doing the us thing properly. And the us thing is, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, this is us. It would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. This is a very important, right? Jesus is calling people into his movement. He's calling people in who have perhaps young faith or fragile faith. Maybe you could have young faith or fragile faith even if you've been at it for decades, right? Maybe your, your faith is a little bit weak or, or you go through a time, time where you find it's, it's very difficult to persevere in the life of great love that, that Jesus has called you to. Woe to anyone who, yeah, they did that. Sometimes you can't hear like the lasso, lasso that I threw out there. So I have to say, like, there's a woe to any one of us who, are, who want to consider ourselves in the inn and part of the Jesus movement. Woe to us if we cause those people to stumble. The people that Jesus has called into his movement, we have to take care of, okay? There's more than, there's more than that, okay? That, that's, the, that's just the frame. That's just the picture frame. Then, Je then Jesus is going to get into, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Right? And like I said, it's good we don't take it literalistically, but, we, do, but we, we take it literally in the sense that we understand within this context what Jesus is trying to do. And he's saying, whatever doesn't conduce to the mission, we need to, I mean, to put it softly, we need to reconsider. If I'm involved in something that's, that's even very good, by the way, like, this is, this is not a condemnation of the material world, so please don't go in that direction. Hands, feet, and eyes, they're good. They're good. God created them to be good. But if they lead you astray, now we have to judge them in a different light. And this is, this is really urgent stuff. So then we can look around us and say, okay, what has God given us? Who, are, who, who am I? What do I have? What do I have at my disposal? Whatever. Is this or that particular thing? And even like, what activities am I involved in? What am I, uh, you know, what am I, what am I, um, the, uh, I don't know, the ideas that I ascribe to, the, the, the way that I think. If any of this causes us to be pulled away from Jesus at all, we have the responsibility to cut it out. We have to do something about it. Even, even, if, these, even if things are good, even if we have in our life things are good that, are not, that do not conduce to our trusting and following Jesus, we have to get rid of them. Now, of course, you don't cut off members of your own body, okay? This is not, please, don't, you know, this is not, we don't need to do this. It's not, it's not the point. But, but we have to be brutal with the decisions that we make if they lead us away from Jesus, right? We, so everything in our, in our heart, everything in our life needs to be in, the, in that direction, in the Jesus direction and given over to, uh, to his mission, that's if when we start living like that, acting like that, and all the rest, we will find our saltiness. We will, we will find that we are, we are salt. And we will find then that we have peace with one another. Because all too, I'll say this, all, all too often I think 
even a church, even a church, will experience um, its its lack of mission or its off mission reality in lack of peace with one another. Because here, everybody is looking not at Jesus. Right? In that situation, if you find a group of disciples, I say quote unquote, but maybe not, if you find a group of disciples and can't live at peace with one another, people do not have their eyes on Jesus. And it's only when you have your eyes on Jesus, totally dedicated to his mission, that we find peace. Because that's, that's when all the pieces fit together. Yeah, and they're not our pieces to fit together. They're God's pieces. Each and every one of us is God's piece to fit together into one coherent whole. That's where we find peace, and that's where we're going, that's where we're going to start to see for ourselves um, that God has called us here uh, to this very place to establish uh, a launching pad for us to be about his work in the world, to be one body about his work in the world, to be his, his one body, his, this particular manifest, manifestation of Christ Jesus uh, to be salt and light for the entire world. He's called us, my friends. He is now equipping us, making us to be salt and light, and he's sending us, as, he's sending us on in the power of his own life of love uh, to make it so that we might bring his salt to the world.